Okay. Keyword foreign monopoly. That means that in the home economy, there's no firms producing the good that we are describing. For instance, cars. Over here we have domestic demand D. Okay. And I think that the foreign monopoly, I think um, Tesla, okay, foreign monopoly on electric cars. There's a marginal cost that's constant just for simplicity, but it doesn't really matter of MC star. And without tariffs, without quotas, without anything, this home monopolist charges a price P1, which is given by the intersection between the marginal revenue curve MR and the marginal cost curve MC star. Now suppose that our home economy imposes a tariff T. Okay, this is could be anti-dumping duty, uh, dumping which we're going to talk about later. As we say, oh, the price P1 is too low, perhaps it's lower than the average cost. We think that this is an unfair practice, what this foreign monopolist is doing. So we're going to increase our, um, we're going to impose a tariff T so that the marginal cost of the firm jumps from NC star to MC star plus T. Now, what is the effect of this? Well, it increases the price from P1 to P2 because we have a new equilibrium given by the intersection between the MC star plus T curve and the marginal revenue curve that did not change at point B. Okay. So what is happening here? Well, the firm is gonna charge a higher price. It increases its cost, so the firm is gonna pass through part at least of this cost to consumers. And so consumers are gonna lose the area C and D. You know, there's no producer surplus here because uh, we don't have any domestic producers of the good. So welfare-wise, let's first look at consumers. Consumers welfare surplus is to be the area between P1 and the demand curve. Now the price increases, that's from P1 to P2. So consumers lose the rectangle C and the triangle D. Excellent. What about the government? Well, the government makes a revenue of a tariff T over the X2 units that are imported. Right, that are produced and, produced and sold in our home economy. Now, the, yeah, obviously that's gonna be a rectangle. The base of that rectangle is X2, so it would be this here. But the base of the rectangle is this one. This is the quantity of imports that we do. But the amount of the tariff, you can eyeball it, is much larger than the difference P1, P2, right? It goes much, much more lower, right? You can see it here. Okay, so this is exactly what we saw for the case of a large economy. What is happening here is that the home economy is able to make the foreign monopoly pay for a little bit of the tariff. Okay? Because the marginal cost of the company increased by T for each unit produced, so the MC curve shifts up, but the price does not increase by the same amount. So there is incomplete pass-through of this uh, of this uh, uh, tariff because the foreign monopoly is basically absorbing part of the tariff by basically charging a lower price P3 before the tariff. So the total government revenues are C plus E and the total welfare, it follows that it's E minus D. If you remember the large economy case with the tariff, uh, the welfare change was E minus D minus B. Okay, not only there was the dead weight loss due to consumers, there was also the dead weight loss due to the producer, right? inefficient producers producing more. In this case, that does not happen because we don't have domestic producers. And so you could imagine that everything has constant, uh, imposing a tariff on a foreign monopoly, even if you're a small economy, can actually generate larger welfare effects than the case of a large economy with perfect competition. And so I understand that that's perhaps a weird example to make, but just so you know that we know what we're talking about. 